Let me just refresh your memory that this is the chapter just after Elijah had defeated the prophets of Baal and Ashtaroth on Mount Carmel. You remember that story, the showdown on Mount Carmel where Elijah had called on God and he answered by fire and the prophets of Baal and Ashtaroth had called on their gods and nothing happened and Elijah actually started taunting them. He said, well, maybe your God is asleep, you know, uh, uh, cry a little louder because he knew that his God would show up. Come on, say amen to that. And at that time, the nation of Israel had turned from God to Baal worship and Elijah was a prophet of God and so that had just occurred. So the 450 prophets of Baal and Ashtaroth who were financed by the government he that has ears to hear, let him hear. The 450 prophets of Baal and Ashtaroth who were financed by the government, Jezebel and Ahab financed them, had been slain. Are you still here? And so when Jezebel gets word that the real prophet of God has stood up and has defeated the spirit that was roaming in the land, and had caused the God who is God to be visibly displayed as being more powerful than all the little G gods. Yeah, 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 yeah. She threatened Elijah and basically said, you'll be dead by this time tomorrow. And when he saw that, he arose and ran for his life and went to Beersheba which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. I want you to pay very close attention to something that the Holy Spirit illuminated to me. The Bible says, and when he saw that. It doesn't say when he heard that. You missed it. Je you, you, you missed it. Jezebel said, so let the gods do to me and more also, this is a threat in, in King James. She's saying, she's saying, she's saying, by, by my God, I'll kill you by this time tomorrow. All right, all right. That's what she's basically saying. And when, and, and the Bible says, and when he saw that, yeah. he arose and ran for his life. Notice, it doesn't say when he heard that, she spoke. But the Bible doesn't say Elijah heard what she said. It says he saw. What she said. See, it's what you see that scares you. And if you allow the words of your adversary to paint pictures in your mind and spirit concerning your defeat and your demise, you will be defeated. Even though you're more than a conqueror. Now this is why the word of God tells us that we are to meditate in the word day and night. Why? So you can observe. So you can see, you see what is happening in your life right now. You are either seeing the images that the enemy's words have painted for you or you are seeing the images that God's word have painted for you. Look at your neighbor and ask him, what do you see? You've got to understand that words paint pictures. When the doctor tells you you have cancer, you immediately see your demise. When you get a certain directive or a certain conclusion from a banker or when the lawyer tells you there's no way out, you see yourself losing. Are you still here? Look at your neighbor and say, and when he saw that, Say it again, and when he saw that. Look at your neighbor and say, and when he saw that. Look at your neighbor and say, what are you seeing? See, this is the power of the word of God. The word of God gives your spirit the authority to change the channel. You missed what I just said. 
The word of God gives your spirit the authority to change the channel. The adversary says to you, you're never going to get out of this. But God says you are more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus who loves you. Are you still here? Touch your neighbor and say, change the channel. That's why it's important for you and I to sit under anointed preaching and teaching of the Word of God. That's why it's important for you to fellowship with other believers and to come together in the gathering of saints because somewhere in the worship, somewhere in the giving, somewhere in the preaching, somewhere in the teaching, the Holy Spirit will take his brush and paint another picture on the inside of you. And when you see yourself living, you will live. When you see yourself whole, you will be well. God has so orchestrated the human spirit. He has so designed the spirit and soul of man that his life moves in the direction of what he sees. I'm going to say that again. God has so designed the human mechanism, the spirit, soul, and body that your life begins to move in the direction of what you see. If you see health, your body will move in that direction. If you see yourself well, your body will begin to move in that direction. If you see yourself prospered, your life will begin to move in that direction. You say, well, Bishop, that's just mind over matter. No, no, it's not. This is word over matter. This is the power of the word of God over every material thing because the word gave birth to every material thing. Are you still here? The Bible says that things that are made were made by things that do not appear. So the word of God gave birth to every created thing. And if it can create one thing, it can create something else. Are you still here? The word of God can create health where sickness is currently abiding. The word of God can create prosperity where lack is currently resident. The word of God can create joy where oppression and depression has moved in and settled its bags. Lay your hand on your brother. Lay your hand on your sister and ask them, what are you seeing? Now look at your other one and say, change the channel. I got to hurry with this. And when he saw that, He arose and ran for his life and went to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree and he prayed that he might die and said, it is enough. Now, Lord, take my life, for I am no better than my fathers. This is very important for every child of God to recognize, realize, and understand. This was the prophet, God's mighty man of faith and power who just yesterday was calling down fire from heaven and the power of God consumed the adversary. And the very next day, he is attacked to the degree that he is running for his life and praying to die. Now you must understand and hear this uh, very well because this is the reality of those men and women of God who are mightily used of God. You will have days of attack. There's not a man of God that I know worth his salt who hadn't prayed that prayer one time or another. God, if it's going to be like this, just take me out of here. I've had enough. I said it, well, uh, watch this. It is enough now, Lord. Take my life, for I am no better than my father's. Watch this. Then as he lay and slept under a broom tree, suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, arise and eat. 
Then he looked, and there by his head was a cake baked on coals and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. Verse 7, and the angel of the Lord came back the second time. Lay your hand on your brother. Lay your hand on your sister and say a second time. Meaning once is not enough. It, once is not enough. This is not something you can just do once. This is something that has to be repeated. It is something that has to be perpetual. It has to become a discipline in the life of the one who is going to finish the race. Watch. So he, so he said, arise, touch them a second time. He said, arise and eat. Because the journey is too great for you. So he arose and ate and drank and he went in the strength of that food 40 days and 40 nights as far as Horeb, the mountain of God, which was a hundred miles or more away. The Bible says that meal, that meal that he ate caused him or strengthened him to be able to go for 40 days and 40 nights on one meal. Served. Are you still here? Served in two courses. One meal gave him the strength to go 40 days. Are you still here? And I was reading this, and, and, and I, I promise you I will not be terribly long, but I was reading this, and as I was reading this, the Spirit of God began to deal with me about something. Lay your hand up on your brother, lay your hand up on your sister, and say, receive this in Jesus' name. And, and the thing that, that hit me, the thing that actually impacted me is when the angel of the Lord comes to Elijah and says, arise and eat because the journey is too great for you. The journey is too great for you. You can't do this on your own. You can't do this by yourself. You cannot do this in your strength. If you are going to do this, lay your hand on your brother, lay your hand on your sister. If you are going to do this, if you're going to get this thing done, if you're going to see this thing come to pass, if you're going to see the manifestation of this thing that God has said to you, you're going to have to understand you can't do it. It's too great for you, too much for you. Look at your neighbor and ask them, are you in a situation that is too much for you? Are you facing a circumstance that is too much for you? Are you in a place right now where what you are dealing with is more than you can handle? If so, I came with good news. Now is not the time to tuck tail and run. Now is not the time to get depressed. Now is not the time to say, how did I get in this situation? Now is the time to lift up your voice, lift up your hands, and prepare to eat some supernatural food. Look at your neighbor and tell them there is a divine meal that has been prepared for you. No, lay your hand on your brother, lay your hand on your sister and tell them you're about to eat angels food. You, you, you are about to be ministered to on a whole nother dimension and you're going to be able to run on the strength of it. Not in your strength. Woo! Touch three people and say, it's too much for me, I admit it. Look at your neighbor and say, it's more than I can handle, I accept it. Look at your neighbor and tell them, I can't do it and I acknowledge it. Lay your hand on a brother, lay your hand on a sister and tell them when this gets done, Everybody will know that there is a God in heaven. When this gets accomplished, oh God, you got to excuse me. When this comes to pass, there will be no doubt that there is a God in heaven who rules and super rules. 
Hallelujah. 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 Touch three people and tell them God is going to do it. God is going to do it. God is going to do it. Kerabo Shata. One of the keys to getting a miracle is recognizing that you are at the length of your extremity. You are at the place where you can do nothing else. So sit down. A lot of people preach and teach that God put you in a situation this where you can do it. No, no, no. God didn't put you there. You could have gotten there much earlier on your own. You didn't hear me. You didn't have to bottom out. You didn't have to be homeless. You didn't have to get to the bottom. I know we've all made that mistake. And then we think, well, you know, the Lord brought me to that. No, no, no. You brought you to that place. If you had surrendered seven weeks ago and acknowledged I can't do it, God would have gone to work seven weeks ago. If you had acknowledged a year ago that it's beyond your ability, God would have gotten in charge. Look at your neighbor and say, he's just been waiting for you to cry, uncle. You know, uncle, you're that day in the game, I can't do it anymore, I'm, I'm done. I, I, I have found out sometimes when I get my most exasperated, God gets his most excited. When, 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 I, when I am fed up, he's like, thank you very much. I was waiting for you. Lay your hand on your brother, lay your hand on your sister and tell them thank you for finally admitting that you can't do it. She looked at you and say thank you for finally acknowledging that it is too much for you. Thank you for finally recognizing that you don't have the strength to do this because now Jehovah, your God, can step in and be I need you to lay your hand up on your brother, lay your hand up on your sister, and tell them, you have to recognize this about you. Tell your neighbor, it's time for you to settle this about you. You have been marked for the supernatural. You have been marked for the supernatural. You are one of those people who is always going to need a miracle. You are one of those people who is always going to need the power of God.